Hey everyone, Kevin here from River City Graphics. Today I'll be showing you how to download, install, and configure WAMP to give yourself a local testing server for PHP and MySQL. So, let's get started. Alright, so to get started, the first thing you're going to do is go over to one of your web browsers. I'm going to choose Google Chrome, and we're just going to type in WAMP into the search queue. Now, this is W-A-M-P. Now, we do have a tutorial on how to install XAMP or XAMP. Um, the reason that I'm choosing to show you guys an alternate, um, which is WAMP in this case, is because when I installed um, Windows 7 64-bit, uh, XAMP for whatever reason didn't seem to be working. Um, it would cause errors. It's, it worked, but it would show errors, and it was kind of annoying. So um, I tried out WAMP, and it worked out perfectly for 64-bit Windows 7. So um, I figured I'd pass along that information to you guys. So um, we're going to open this up. The first one right here, WAMPserver.com/en for um, English-speaking viewers. And then in order to get started, we're just going to click Start Using WAMP Server. Pretty straightforward. So then you'll select whichever one you want. Um, I'm just going to select this top one here, 64-bit. Um, it's got Apache, MySQL, PHP. Um, it's got Xdebug and all kinds of other stuff. Um, if you are running 32-bit, um, you want to select that one. So I'm just going to grab the 64-bit one. It's going to bring up a warning. Um, basically, just click this. You can download it directly here. It's going to take you over to SourceForge. Um, if you're using something like um, Firefox and you have McAfee or something installed, sometimes SourceForge um, will have a fit because uh, SourceForge is just a place that people can upload files and so you never really know if those files are secure, but um, in this case we know that it's from a reputable location, so we're going to be okay here. So I'm just going to do show in folder, and here's the file that we just downloaded. So I'm just going to take and drag that to my desktop. Now this will be different if you're using Firefox or Internet Explorer. Basically, wherever your downloads go, just get that and drag it to your desktop. So I'm going to close that. So now what we need to do is basically just run this. So I'm just going to double click, run it. Sometimes you need administrative um, access. And I'm just going to click next. I do accept next. And then you want to just leave this where it's at, um, C, and then WAMP right off of C, because you want it to be in the most accessible place possible, because you're probably, um, in your web development, going to be flying in and out of folders, and to have it in that root folder is really nice. So I'm just going to click Next. We'll do create a quick launch icon, which I think is the thing down in your bar uh, at the bottom, and then you can do a desktop icon as well. So I'm going to click Install, and it's going to chew through and install all of those files. So it shouldn't take too long. Um, basically, what we're going to have after we do this um, is a testing server where we can use PHP um, and MySQL, where you normally wouldn't actually be able to do that um, without your own local testing server environment. So it's going to be um, a lot more helpful for you um, if you wanted to develop offline, because a lot of times you um, and want to build your website offline um, and then put it online once you have it looking good and everything. You don't want it to be up where the world can see it when it's not completely finished. So that's what this allows you to do. So there we go. It has finished installing. It wants us to select our default browser. Now you can go through um, your program files and hunt for something, but I just have all my browsers on my desktop, so I'm just going to link to, say, the shortcut of Firefox and click OK. Alright, now it brings up some issues for um, SMTP and email, which is basically for um, doing mailing from your local server. Um, if it says, if you're not sure, just leave the default values. I just left the default values, so we're just going to click finish. Okay, and it'll say launch WAMP server now. Alright, so it'll say yes, we're running it. Um, you should see an icon down in the bottom um, right corner of your screen where all of your little icons are. Um, I can exit out of this and now we can take and turn this back on. So whenever you want to run WAMP, um, this is the installer, we don't need that anymore. Um, this is what it actually installed right here. Looks like this icon sometimes has a little shield on it if you need privileges to run it. So we'll double click on that. It'll bring this up needing access. You hit yes and now you're running and you're ready to go for whatever local development you want to do. So now if we just type localhost you can see that if this screen comes up, then you've done everything correctly. So you should see, um, basically, this is this is kind of your dashboard for uh, WAMP. So if we click um, PHP MyAdmin, you can see you can do all of your MySQL um, stuff in here. 
Um, I do have tutorials on how to create databases and uh, tables within those and also some actual PHP and MySQL tutorials um, for, I don't know, I think I have a view counter one and some other stuff. So those things, um, because they're using PHP, my admin aren't specific to XAMPP, so you should be able to follow along with those um, in setting up that stuff as well. So um, if you still want to make sure that this is working correctly, um, I'm going to show you how to do your files um, so that you know where to put your files so that you can actually test them on this. What we're going to do is pull up our file directory here, just a new explorer window, and we're going to click on C. Now under C you'll see you have a new folder called WAMP, which is where it said that it was going to put this. So if we open that up, you can see we have a www folder. So if we open that up, this is basically like the htdocs folder that a lot of other local servers use. Um, whatever's in here, we're going to be able to access. So um, we're going to open up Dreamweaver. I'm just going to pull this off screen real quick. Open up Dreamweaver, and we're just going to create a new test file. Okay. So I'm going to put this back. We can minimize that. Create a new PHP file. We're just going to make just the most basic PHP file here. So our opening and closing PHP tags, and then we're just going to say echo, two quotes, and a semicolon. And then inside of there, I'm just going to put PHP is running. And then we can put an exclamation point because we are really excited that we have this going. So I'm just going to hit save, and now we can take and go to computer, C, WAMP, www, and save it right there in that folder. And I'm just going to call this test.php. Okay. So now that we have that done, we can close Dreamweaver because that should all be working. Go back to our um, Firefox or whatever web browser you want to use. I'm going to hit the slash. And then what we can do is take and say test.php. Now this should bring up PHP is running. So that's basically where you can put your files in order to run them. Now you'll see if you go back to your local host kind of dashboard that you have this thing called projects. Now this is um, probably one of my more favorite features of WAMP. Um, you can actually take and split all of your files into different projects and it will keep managing those. So what you can do is come into WAMP um, and the www folder and you can create a new folder. That's basically how you create a project. So we can call this RCG project. Then we can take and drag our test file into that. So now we've created a project here. So if we come back over here and refresh this, under your projects you'll see RCG project. You can click on that. You can see all the files that you have. You can actually run them from there. So you'll see that the new path to this is localhost slash RCG project slash test.php. So it's pretty cool that you can actually split that stuff off because a lot of times you're not just working on one thing. You don't want to have all of your folders um, in one one area because I mean it would just get crazy to have a ton of files in here especially if you're working with something like WordPress or something that just has tons of folders and tons of files so you want to kind of keep them split up into their separate projects and um, that's good so one more thing that I wanted to mention um, there is a Mac version of WAMP um, if the W in WAMP stands for Windows then um, one could only assume that if you take and put an M there for MAMP that you would get a Mac version and that is the case. You can search for MAMP and you can download a Mac version of um, WAMP and install that and I've never had a problem with that either um, whenever I'm running on a Mac system. So hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you um, are able to get this up and running and testing in your local environment. Um, it's definitely really helpful. Um, you can do it without internet. You can do um, all kinds of stuff in the local environment before you actually make it live to your viewers. So thanks for watching. I will have a new video tutorial coming out every week, so make sure and subscribe to the channel. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.